Hello, welcome to this TTK tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to reproduce one of the examples shown in the gallery section of the TTK website. So uh, let's go there. And uh, in particular I will show you how to reproduce the uh, Morris Molecule uh, demo, which is uh, right here. So for this you will first need to open a uh, terminal, like I did here. And here I will assume that you downloaded and decompressed the TTK source code and data tarballs uh, to uh, this directory here, TTK. All right. And of course, I will assume that you successfully installed TTK. So we'll go ahead and move to the uh, data directory here with this command. And we'll enter the command parview dash dash state states morse molecule dot pvsm. And we'll press uh, the key enter. And this will take some time to compute. All right, so here we are. So what we see here is the uh, topological analysis of a uh, molecular uh, data set that is simulated. So the data that we have here is a um, regular grid in 3D, such that for each point of space, we have an estimation of the electron density. So the electron density is uh, more or less the uh, probability to meet an electron at some point in space. And this uh, density is higher in the vicinity of the atoms. And here, uh, the molecule that we're looking at is the uh, ethendiol. And uh, so then the local maxima of the density correspond to the atoms. And you can see those maxima in uh, green. And those links that you see in white are actually uh, the separatrices of the Morse complex that connect the two saddles to uh, the maxima of the field. And um, this is um, one of the things that is beautiful with this application is that uh, the features of the Morseman complex directly translate from a chemical point of view in the sense where uh, the um, separatrices connecting the two saddles to the maxima indeed correspond to uh, the covalent bound that connect uh, the atoms together in the molecule. So this is pretty, uh, pretty nice. Okay, so now we'll move on to uh, the visualization that we have here at the bottom, where I displayed in green uh, a wall corresponding to the two saddle that is here. And the interpretation of this wall is that for each point on this green surface, in the, in the vicinity of this point, if you uh, move a tiny bit to the left and you integrate uh, the gradient of the field forward, you will end up in this oxygen atom here on this side. And if you are on the other side of the wall, if you just move a little bit to the right and you integrate the gradient forward, you will end up in this oxygen atom here to the right. So uh, this wall is called a separatrix because uh, in the vicinity of this wall, whether or not uh, you're on the left or on the right, you will end up in different locations after integration. As a side note, uh, the volume rendering that you see here uh, from blue to green as a semi-transparent is uh, the reduced gradient function. Okay, so now we move on to uh, the top right corner. What we see here is actually uh, the separatrices, the, the walls emanating from all the one saddles upwards. So uh, one way to understand this is that these walls separate regions of space that corresponds to the basins of the local minima, which means that here we have a sort of compartment and if we integrate backward the gradient, uh, for each of the points of this compartment, we'll end up the integration in this corner here, in this minimum. And if we move on below, if we integrate downwards, we'll end up in this minimum here. So basically the, the, one, the walls of the one saddles um, kind of construct this sort of compartment. Okay. And what I represented um, in the um, bottom right corner is actually uh, the um, 
green wall and the blue walls, and I represented in black the curve that is in the intersection of the ascending and the descending walls, of the blue and the green walls. And this intersection is actually a saddle connector, connecting a one saddle to a two saddle. All right. So as I explained briefly before, uh, this kind of topological analysis is particularly useful in uh, chemistry because you can get the molecular structure of the data very quickly and uh, very efficiently uh, with the Morseman complex. And then you can do further analysis about the different connections that you have in your system, uh, the distance between the atoms and the molecule and all this. Okay, so now I will show you how to reproduce this visualization from scratch. So I will close part of you. I will open it again on the uh, built-in example number two. Now press enter. Okay, and here we are. So first I will extract a uh, level set of the density function. So to do some processing, you can click on the menu filters and then you can access to all the features that are available in part of you and TTK. For TTK features, you can access them through these uh, some menu, but in the demo, I will use this search menu where I can actually type the name of the feature that I want to use. And this is uh, very efficient. All right, so I'll go ahead and do this and try to uh, search for the contour uh, plugin here. And I will compute a level set on the row field at the value one. I'll click enter. This is uh, the molecule Kind of the shape of the molecule here. I put that in white with the edges and transparent. Okay. Also, on top of this, I will compute nothing just to have a sort of duplicated uh, view of this. And here I will display this uh, with a volume and I will show uh, the other field, log like S. And here I need to tune uh, the transfer function a bit. Here, edit. So this I will flip like this. This I will increase. All right. This and we'll move towards here to have a bit of blue. There we go. Here is our uh, volumetric transfer function. Good. So at this point, uh, we can compute uh, the Morseman complex. And uh, we can click here and go ahead and say uh, Morseman complex here. So first off, I will uh, uncheck. We'll compute this on the row field. I will uncheck all of these and show you what a default computation uh, would look like. And this would take a bit of time. So traditionally, uh, uh, more small complex computational algorithms based on the uh, on the discrete gradient. Uh, have sorts of uh, artifacts due to the combinatorial nature of the algorithm. These artifacts are the following, and I will explain this. Okay, so here uh, you see that a lot of critical points have been identified by the algorithm, and this is kind of byproduct of the algorithm itself. The algorithm is very consistent um, and very robust, but it will tend to have plenty of artifacts. So TTK implements uh, a procedure to make uh, this discrete gradient uh, comply uh, to uh, the critical points that you will obtain the PL setting as you would trad traditionally do uh, on that meshes, for instance, for country trees and persistence diagram. So we'll go ahead and uh, select this. We'll ask it to uh, be compliant to uh, the PL setting. And we'll also ask to extract pretty much all of the features that you could extract from Marshmallow Complex, and we'll click on Apply. And this will take a bit of time to compute. All 
Right, so here we don't see much, so I will move these. I will put remove the separatrices too and put some actual spheres uh, on the critical points like this 1.5 okay very good and now um, what we want to do is to have a look at the separatrices to extract the structure of the molecule if we have a look at those we see that we have a very dense uh, network of curves so fortunately uh, we can perform some queries with some thresholding on these. In particular, we can have a look at all the separatrices and sort them um, depending on the index of the critical points that is uh, the source of the separatrix. So for instance, here, if I say two, I will extract all the separatrices that come from uh, two saddle to maximum. Let's do this. And here, the network of curve is uh, much uh, smaller. So now we'll further refine this query by uh, considering uh, this field, number of critical points on the boundary. In particular, we'll want to extract only those separatrices that do not have any critical point on the boundary, that do not touch the boundary. And here, and there we go. We have these curves here that um, correspond to the covalent bound of the molecule. So then we can uh, do some smoothing here on these guys. Okay, we can extract some uh, surface out of them and some tubes. Okay, and bigger like this. Or, oops, like that. Okay, we can smooth further. Let's say 15. All right, and here we go. And here we have uh, the co covalent structure of the molecule. Which, is, uh, which was easy to, to get from the Morseman complex. So next, we'll have a look at other separatrices, in particular the separatrices connecting one saddle to two saddles. And here, uh, we'll have a look at critical point index to look at those separatrices that come from uh, one saddles. we put one here. And there you go, you have plenty of them. And those that we want to look at actually are the following. I uh, brought the number before. Two, eight. And here, you see it's kind of this cross. So we can smooth that. Set for 15 as well. And we can put some surface and some tube. Five, let's say 0.5. All right, you can put that in color like this. All right, right on. So now uh, let's extract the walls uh, coming from the one saddles. So let's have a look at these and do uh, a query on the on the actual walls. And we'll take all this uh, wall that come from a one saddle here. And there we are. So originally this is a very um, discrete kind of representation. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the edges here, uh, those cells are not exactly um, uh, triangles or quads. Uh, this is due to the primal nature of those uh, geometrical objects. So this is not a problem. We'll uh, call the tetra tetrahedralizer to compute some triangles out of that, and then we can smooth a bit like this. Okay. All right. This is much better. We we'll call this in blue. All right. And here we have uh, the walls coming out of the uh, one saddles. So then uh, we may want uh, to put um, the wall coming from a two saddle. We'll do some more thresholding here. And you see that here you still have a lot of them. Uh, we can uh, threshold them and then have a look at those that are not on the boundary, or at least have a few critical points on the boundary. And you see that you still have a lot of them. So uh, what we'll end up doing is that we'll actually enter 
uh, the identifier of this matrix, which I wrote down uh, earlier. So here, go there, and we want uh, number 40, I guess. Yep, that's it. So basically, here you can iterate through the different identifiers until uh, you collect uh, the wall that you wanted in the first place. So this guy has been uh, computed in the primal domain, so in theory we can use it as is. We can call the smoother here. And uh, we'll color it in green here, and we will make it transparent. Say four. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So here I'm just displaying the view that was on the bottom uh, right, but basically you can create more views like this. And here, let's say we can put, we just need to select what we want to visualize. You may want to link the camera together to make sure that you have the same uh, angle of view. And then uh, you may want to display those with um, said dimension. You want to display the contour with the same uh, properties here. And uh, you may want to display uh, just uh, the walls coming here in blue. And the different separate receipts that we uh, identified before. These guys as well here. All right, and uh, you can do again uh, the same thing for the different views. All right, and that's uh, pretty much it. Let me close this one and have a look at this. So uh, here you saw how to use uh, the Marshman complex uh, you know, for three D data, in particular for molecular data. So at this point, you may want to save uh, the state. Uh, to be able to reload what you just configured very quickly. And that's uh, pretty much it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.